Hello everybody. Thanks again for visiting my YouTube channel. We are here once again discussing the Lord's Recovery Movement, also known as the Local Church Movement of Witness Lee. I was in the Lord's Recovery Movement for many years as a young person, left and discovered after I left I had to struggle with a lot of issues of doubt and condemnation and readjustment to a more normal life and for a long time I wandered and one of my hopes for creating these videos is I can help people have a smoother and shorter path back to a normal life than I did. One thing I wanted to say that though everybody has their path and I'm not an authority my words aren't the final word on anything overcoming the effects of a group like the Lord's Recovery Movement is a spiritual thing. It's ultimately a spiritual thing. The condemnation, the doubt, the confusion, the guilt, and a lot of the impulses are not just psychological in nature, they're spiritual in nature. And they are generated by evil forces counterfeiting God. And so they can only be overcome spiritually, ultimately. That doesn't mean that therapy and counseling and learning things and learning better and more healthy psychological habits can't help. They can. But ultimately, there also has to be a spiritual element. For me, that centered in prayer. That centered in me finding God myself. And in a sense, coming out of the Lord's recovery is a search for God, a true search for God, because Although you might be saved, you might have some experiences of God in the Lord's recovery. You have to rediscover or discover for the first time what is actually real and what is actually false. And I think one of the keys to understand is God is not going to put you under pressure to make these decisions. The one that's making you anxious, the one that's saying, you need to hurry up and get this right or you're in trouble. The one that's making you feel desperate and hurried and lacking peace and fearful is not God. God is simply there as your friend, as your father. God doesn't work in condemnation, but he does work in correction. But his correction is always positive. His correction is always encouraging, ultimately, even though it might give us a little realization of, oh, I need to change direction, you always know just what to do. And you always know that it's positive. It's always very affirming. It's not vague. It's not confusing. The Bible says God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. The Bible says he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Now, Paul said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So what's the story on fear? What's the deal with that? Well, when the Bible uses fear, it's talking about a kind of respect and awe for God. It's not talking about something that paralyzes you, something that freezes you like a deer in the headlights. If you're experiencing the awe of God, which galvanizes you to obey him, it's always very definite and positive and directional. It pushes you in a positive direction toward him in a victorious way. One thing I encourage people to do is realize that God is a God of peace. He's a God of comfort in our spirit, in our hearts. If you're feeling confused, if you're feeling condemned, if you're feeling lost, if you're feeling desperate, if you're feeling hopeless. None of that is coming from God. Now, some might say, well, you feel that way because you sinned, because this is the fruit of sin, is this confusion. Well, I agree that sin can produce negative inward feelings, but God doesn't confirm those things. He's always there saying, come to me and I'll give you rest. When you turn to God, you should get reassurance, you should get rest, you should get confidence, and you should get peace. One of my experiences when I was trying to dig my way out of this is I never could seem to get that. And finally, I just kind of had the attitude where I said, you know, I'm just going to do my best and not worry about it. And I didn't always do that successfully, but often that was something that worked for me. And I found things in my life 
where I could find peace. One thing I did is I took up playing golf. And I always could find peace on the golf course. When I got on the golf course, I just felt like I was okay. And I think that's very valid to have a hobby, to have a pursuit, to have something that gets your mind off of things where you are just living a normal human life. One thing you need to do is in that context of doing that stuff, eventually invite God back into it. And it's a wonderful thing to realize that the Bible says that God has given us all things to enjoy. And all things include human things, it includes family things, it includes wholesome things, it includes entertaining things. God has given the human race a lot of wonderful things. Where we go wrong is we put these things ahead of him. But Witness Lee had this attitude that you could not enjoy anything but God. And that's really, again, another half-truth. Witness Lee was the king of half-truths. He really was. It's wrong to put anything ahead of God. But it's not wrong to enjoy things other than God, as long as, in that context, your heart is still open to God and you still have a heart to be obedient to Him. There are a lot of things we enjoy, and He delights in seeing us enjoy the gifts He gave us. If you have a child... And you give the child a toy, you don't go around saying, now you can't enjoy that toy, you just have to enjoy me. There are times when we can put too much into a thing, and I, and I experience that sometimes. For me, a lot of times it's music. I will really get into music, and I will start to try to get out of a song the reality that I should be trying to get out of God. And he will just kind of nudge me about that and say, I'm okay with you enjoys this song. Just don't make this song me because I'm not this song. This song reflects a certain feeling, a certain sentiment, but it's not me. Don't mistake this song for me. And I say, amen. And guess what? I benefit from that. So it's a process of learning that, of getting back to that place where you're not so extreme in your behavior and you understand that God is generous and he's not all crazy. Don't enjoy your soul. This was a huge fallacy of Witness Lee's, the issue of enjoying your soul. And you can't enjoy your soul life and you need to kill your soul life and just enjoy your spirit. That is not a scriptural sentiment at all. When the Bible talks about losing your soul, it's basically just saying, giving up your power of decision and giving it over to God himself. That's what it's talking about. It's saying when God tells you to do something, you obey him. It doesn't mean you go around looking for ways to punish yourself and get rid of things that you're enjoying just because they are something other than God. That is just not a healthy mindset at all because you end up focusing on punishing yourself and hurting yourself rather than simply just being thankful for God's generosity for all the wonderful things he's given you. So the key is, is to let God into everything and then he will guide you into what you should be doing and he'll change your tastes. He'll just change your tastes. There's just some TV shows I can't watch anymore. I just don't want to watch them. But I didn't have to like say, I cannot watch TV must stay away from TV because it's bad, evil. Just by letting the Lord in, I just, there's just stuff I don't want to watch anymore. Witness Lee had an attitude. You can't go to movies, can't watch TV, can't do nothing. You can't read books, can't read magazines, can't read the newspaper. And let's be clear about something. This business of telling you, you can't enjoy this, you can't enjoy that, was just one more way Witness Lee controlled you. Why? Because he wanted you to get all your enjoyment out of him and his ministry and his churches and his thing. He wanted to hook you on his stuff so that you needed him. Now, maybe somewhere in the recesses of Witness Lee's confused mind, he thought he was doing a good work by doing this. But if he did, he was sorely deceived. Isn't it awfully strange that everything Witness Lee had good intentions of doing imprisoned a whole huge group of people to him and his ministry, which put money in his pockets. He was the great commander of all this. And if you're enjoying something other than his ministry, he would give you a hard time about it. It's just crazy. But that's what we were sold. And like any other abused group of people in an AKA cult, we were deceived by it. So just admit it. Just admit you were deceived.
and realized that the extreme life that Witness Lee prescribed was an invalid life. And that's why you ended up being so miserable, and that's why you had to get out of it. The whole attitude of that you cannot enjoy your life, you cannot have a human life that is enjoyable, is just not a healthy sentiment at all. And it's not something that anybody is going to be attracted to. You're not going to have anything in common with the people that are yet to know the Lord. Your neighbors and friends, they're just going to look at you as weird. If you don't have a life, if you don't have a human life, if all you do is go to meetings and read the Bible and, and that's all you do and you can't relate to anything human, you're not going to have anything in common with those people. They're not going to understand you. It's good and healthy to have a life. It's good and healthy to be somebody that people in the world can somewhat relate to. So getting to that point is a process. When you come from an extreme group that is legalistic, and especially one like the Lord's Recovery, which is really legalistic but pretended not to be legalistic, which can be very confusing, you have to get back to a more normal relationship with God in a more normal spiritual life. God made us human. He gave us all kinds of human things to experience and enjoy. Those things are not things that are in the way or distractions or are unfortunate things that we have to put up with. That's life. That's just life. And within the context of our human life, God trains us and he gives us things to enjoy and he also reminds us that we're not, haven't reached our goal yet. There are things in our life that reaffirm that this isn't heaven. But within that, he still gives us human things to enjoy, which are valid, which are gifts from him, which you shouldn't feel guilty about enjoying. But within those things, you learn to be thankful to him and to give up everything to him. And he will show you when you are going off track. As the Bible says, if you be otherwise minded, God will show you this. That's something we can trust him to do. You don't have to be going through your life with blinders on and in a state of paralysis or with your teeth clenched and white knuckling it, as one pastor I know calls it. Just relax and enjoy your day. Enjoy your life. Take care of things. Stop and smell the flowers, as the saying goes. And enjoy God along the way and let him guide you into his goal for you. And he will do it. He said, do not be afraid, for I am with you. If you can hang on to that truth, make that a central truth of your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Jesus was always, always telling his disciples, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Why did he tell them not to be afraid? Because we don't need to be afraid. That's why he told them. You don't need to be afraid. So don't be afraid. If God is for us, who can be against us? Again, God is for you. He's for you all the way. What we need to learn to do is just to trust him and turn things over to him and realize if something bad happens to us, if something negative happens, don't be freaked out. Don't be think it's some kind of punishment. It's just part of the path. It's part of the journey. And if we learn to trust him completely when those things happen, as Jesus said, we will overcome them. In the world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. That's his promise to us. And that's the end of this message. Thanks a lot for listening again. Appreciate it. Take care.